welcome our uh, distinguished panel of administration officials, uh, especially Mr. LaHood, uh, former colleague. Of course, Dr. Chu, who uh, I had some dealings with in the laboratories, and the Honorable Ms. Ja Mrs. Jackson, we appreciate you being here. I think it's, um, it's interesting, Mr. Chairman, that, that um, we're trying to go ahead and move a bill that will reduce uh, CO2 emissions in the United States to 83 per, below 83 percent um, of their baseline of 2005. Uh, if you want an idea of what that's like in terms of carbon footprint, uh, you might try uh, living in Nigeria today because that's the emission level that they, uh, they have right now. Uh, if you have a time machine, you might dial your time machine to 1875 and uh, feel what it's like uh, to live in America back in 1875 with a carbon footprint of approximately two and a half tons per person. Uh, I don't think most of uh, today's citizenry in the United States would, would enjoy that type of a lifestyle too much. I also think that it's interesting that um, a lot of people seem very determined to raise energy prices in this country. Uh, our current president, President Obama, I said during the campaign that, that capping carbon and trading emissions would make electricity bills necessarily skyrocket. And that's his quote, necessarily skyrocket. Uh, the people that uh, global warming is religion uh, believe that carbon dioxide, CO2, which is naturally occurring in nature, uh, is the devil's brew. And they apparently think that we can only achieve salvation by putting our faith in the United States federal government. Uh, our government will offer indulgences in the form of emission permits, and we will all atone for our past sins and our economy's past sins by paying through the nose with these expensive new energy carbon taxes. Um, it's no secret that I'm a skeptic. I don't, I don't believe that uh, mankind is the primary cause of climate change. I do accept that um, the CO2 levels are rising. Uh, I think it's a debatable proposition, uh, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, but in any event, uh, to put some sort of blind faith in a cap and trade system that hasn't worked anywhere in the world in terms of CO2, won't work here in the United States. And uh, if we take it to the level that the draft bill that Mr. Waxman, and Mr. Markey have, have put out, uh, it will deindustrialize the United States of America in the next 40 years. Uh, I'm not going to be a part of that. I'm just not going to do it. The dark side of economic opportunity will always be that somebody thinks they can benefit from it. And I believe that that's one reason uh, so many U.S. companies, some of which are going to be before us later this afternoon, uh, support the cap and trade because they think they can benefit economically. Uh, either by having allowances to sell or by trading in the allowance market. Uh, and I understand the need to make a dollar, uh, but I think it's a terrible thing if, we, if we're going to set up a system where uh, uh, the only people that, that benefit uh, are the people that are in the trading system and the people that get these free allowances uh, uh, because of what they've done in the past. Now, I understand that your draft uh, is silent on that. They, uh, and my understanding is that you and Mr. Markey have decided, at least so far, to not, not have free allowances. Uh, you're going to have an auction system. Uh, I hope you stick with that. Uh, and I was here in the um, Clean Air Act amendments when we did SO2 back in the early 90s, and I remember the fights we had on baselines, and I remember the fights we had uh, on allowances for particular plants and things like that. Uh, that will be a picnic uh, compared to what we'll have if we go down where we start trying to, or we, not me, but you and Mr. Markey start trying to buy votes by giving allowances to this group or that group or whatever. I think it's interesting that we don't have a score from CBO uh, because you've not put anything out that CBO can score. So apparently, if and when we go to markup, uh, we're going to have this miracle draft that comes forward in terms of a manager's amendment, and lo and behold, uh, there will be something to score, but CBO won't have time to score it. Uh, if it's anything close to what we had last year, 
in the Senate with the uh, Warner Lieberman bill, uh, it's going to be very, very expensive. Uh, if it's close to what the what the uh, Obama administration put in their uh, budget, um, according to the CBO director, uh, it's probably going to score in the neighborhood of $2 trillion negatively uh, over an eight-year period. Uh, that's a pretty expensive uh, package, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if you look at where our economy is today and what the unemployment rate is today, uh, where the stock market is today, uh, I don't think that's a, uh, a cost that we can uh, uh, that we can bear. As long as we're talking about cost, uh, let's talk about the inc just the straight increases in energy cost. Um, every 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 estimate that I've seen, Mr. Chairman, um, says that uh, energy costs are going to go up across across the board. Um, the electricity costs could go up somewhere between 44 to 125 percent. Uh, gasoline costs could go up. Uh, you name the cost, it's going to go up. How does that affect the unemployment rate? Uh, Michigan right now has an unemployment rate of 12 percent. Indiana has an unemployment rate of 10 percent. Ohio is at 9.7. California and Georgia are at 9.2 percent. Uh, even my great state of Texas, where the economy is relatively better off, has got an employment rate over 6 percent. I mean, if energy prices go up, uh, Lots and lots of Americans are going to lose their jobs, and then that, in turn, is going to um, cause even more uh, deficit spending on behalf of the federal government. Uh, how is that costed into this, into this draft? Um, however you cost it, it's going to be a negative cost. I could go on and on, Mr. Chairman, but I've already gone over almost two minutes. I, I appreciate your uh, indulgence. Uh, putting me down is undecided on your bill. and. Um, <laughs> I look forward to hearing from our panel and then and then trying to work with you and Mr. Markey and members of the committee to, to, to do something that's positive. Thank you, Mr. Barton. Now I want to recognize the chairman of the uh, energy. Uh,